Last week I made a video about why you should be using a master task database, but I didn't really go into detail about how you actually create it from scratch. So I know it can be tricky when you're looking at somebody's setup when it's already done for you and it's it's looking pretty advanced and all the fields are already in there. So I just thought I would show you how I would set up a master task database from scratch. And of course, this is going to be different for every single person. Um, the things that you're going to want to track are going to be different than the things that I track. So um, let me just give you a really loose overview of what I would do as I'm setting up a master task database. So I would either call it tasks or master tasks, whatever is going to be easy for you to remember. I call mine tasks and I've got this little green checkbox icon. And that way, if I'm ever calling that database in any of my other pages, as I'm typing in um, the create linked database, I can see by the icon, I know that that's the correct database. So I would give this a unique icon, something that you're going to remember. And then you'll notice you've got these options here, table, board, list, calendar. Um, it really doesn't matter what you choose. I think you could just start with the table and um, you're going to create a whole bunch of different views of this anyway. So um, this would be the name of your task. Now it's not going to look like anything fancy at the moment, but really the power is once you start pulling it into your other spaces. So let's say we do want to keep a field for tags. I often will remove the files field. I find I don't really use it very often. I will sometimes use URL. So I will put that in there instead. You might want to have a status column, which you may want to do as a drop down select. And um, you could configure those options and say, you know, um, in progress, not started. Sometimes you might be waiting for a client to get back to you with some piece of information. Uh, complete. I actually don't often use complete because I really like having a checkbox. What's nice about um, the checkbox, I'll usually put that as done. I like to put that on the left hand side. So what's nice about the checkbox is if I create a filtered view and I only want to show things that haven't been checked as done, I can do that. So let's say unfinished business. So basically I'm creating a view called unfinished business and I want to filter that so that I only want to see things that are not checked as done. And then maybe I want to sort it um, alphabetically or maybe by due date. Um, we don't have a due date yet, so let's go ahead and add that. And you can, um, you can either call that date or due date, whatever makes the most sense for you. I've seen some people also have uh, multiple multiple dates on there. And of course, you can give this a date range. So let's say I want to give that an end date and set a reminder for myself. Great. Actually, let's, yeah, this would be another task. I'm just going to add a few from scratch just so you can see how I would do this. And then I'm going to sort by date here. And I want, you know, the most pressing dates to show up at the top here. Um, other fields you could add. Um, if I take a look at my task database here, I have a lot of, um, we have some test data here. So let's say um, if I, put a new empty page. You can see some of the ones I already have here. So I've got status, uh, priority, tags, due date, and there's a lot here for sure. Um, and so you don't have to have as many, but we we use um, relational databases pretty heavy. So you can see that I can assign a task to a project, a focus area, a feature, etc. So just to quickly show you um, what we could do is I'll make another workspace here that has, um, we'll call this projects. Again, you can set this up however you want. I often like to put um, projects in a gallery view. Project one. Um, I won't add too many 
fancy properties in there for now. Um, just kind of want to show you what's possible. So in tasks, if I let's say I want to create a relation between tasks and projects, I can add a property, go to relation, type in projects, and you can see um, I have a bunch here. So there we go. Oh, well, let's name, make sure we name that projects. And then you can see those are the um, entries that are available in that projects database. So I'm just going to link that up to project one there. Now, at some point, this uh, database starts to get pretty big and it might not be as useful. Um, so that's why I create very, very refined views and use cases. And I will embed this task database inside of other pages so that I can um, only surface the information that I want to see at any given one, any given time. Another property that you might want to add, especially if you've got more than one person that might be seeing these tasks would be um, person, right? I can assign that to me. Add, uh, and of course, below, I can add whatever information I want. Um, anything pertaining to that task, um, I will add below, whether that's images or copy or um, embedded notes, Google Docs, things like that. You can also do that up here, of course, if, if you know that there's certain types of information that you collect over and over again. And so similarly, as you have other databases that might be relevant, you might want to add um, additional things. So I have a separate calendar, so I, I will add a relation to my calendar database, and that way I can assign the tasks to uh, show up on the calendar if need be. But um, I'll give you another example of just another way that we could view this master task database. Again, so you can see um, there's the one that I assigned a date to, and you can see that there are a few that don't have a date, so I can uh, make those appear, drag them wherever I want, do that other thing. Maybe I'll do that on Monday, right? And if I open that up, you can see that the date has now been set. So there's a few different ways. Again, you can manipulate this data, um, you know, view it as a calendar, view it as um, a filtered database. And um, I often will just kind of have like the master view as well. So you can see all of the fields, but very quickly I start to say, um, I start to refine the views and you can do that by hiding any of these fields by right clicking, hide it. And I will filter this to show only items that are uh, checked as done. Since there's nothing uh, completed yet, it's not going to show up there. So if I go back to my uh, master or let's say that we go to my unfinished business, let's say I just I don't want to see all of this information here, right? I can hide any of that. The most important thing I usually want to see is the name of the task, the date, and there may be some tag or there may be some some filter, or maybe who it's assigned to. You can really choose um, how much of that you want to see. Um, another thing that we could do is organize that by board. Right, and this is where um, it defaults to the status, which again, I can drag that in wherever I need to. And if I open that up, you can see it's been assigned the status of in progress. So now I've got a couple, you know, different views here, but still for the most part, I won't really generally ever click on the tasks as is. I'm only ever looking at it in context elsewhere. So in my dashboards, in my weekly agenda, in my journal, because to me, it's more helpful to look at that refined view. And um, if I'm working from a template every week, I can refine that view of the database in my template and the settings are already set. So I, you know, I don't have to go through and hide all the properties that I want to hide. It's pretty much ready to go. So now that we have um, tasks and projects, I'll just quickly show you again how to embed that um, master task database into a page. Okay, I'm going to press enter. And if you hit um, the slash for commands, you can just type create, uh, create linked database. And I'm going to choose 
tasks and I'm going to look for the magic eight ball again when you work with a number of different um, client workspaces it makes sense to make sure that those icons are, are memorable I like to turn it to full width um, for my pages and sometimes I'll also switch it to small text whatever works for you so this is just an example of uh, a view embedded inside a page and then again I can also um, add headings here so this just acts like any normal page and I can drag this around, move it up, move it down and reorganize this how I want, make the adjustments. And so if I make the adjustments here, it's not going to adjust the views on the master database. So you can see those views that I created don't exist here. So it asks me to add a view, whereas here, I've already got these views created. So they don't necessarily transfer over. So that's something to be aware of. And uh, that's why I tend to set up the views as I want them in my spaces one time, and then that becomes a template that I use week after week. So that's why I embed my master task database inside of my weekly agenda template. So then anytime I create a new week, it already has that uh, embedded database already ready to go. So again, you'd want to do the same thing, create your, um, you know, your boards, whatever is the easiest way for you to access that information and store whatever you want to store. You can do that. I tend to, um, I tend to view it in a gallery view. Not always, but um, I'll show you what that looks like. So you can adjust these properties. What's doing is it's basically looking for a cover image. And since I don't have one, I just say none. And again, you can change the preview size, you can make them small, you can make them large, and you can choose any of these properties to show below who it's assigned to. Um, since most of my tasks are assigned to me, I don't tend to turn that on. And then, yeah, if there's any status things like that, you can always add that. Um, and there's just so many different ways that you could view that information that makes sense for you. So again, this is just sort of a master master table. So I will create a few different views based on what I want to see. And um, so you might have, you know, personal stuff and business stuff, and you might want to keep those separate. Um, you know, you might want to even create a project, whether it's a project called personal or what have you. I tend to take anything that has a specific due date, anything that's going to take uh, less than a couple months, I will give it a project, even if it's a personal project. So um, that way I can always assign something here to a project. And then you can refine this table view. And that way, let's say this becomes your personal or you want to create a personal to do's. Um, then you can actually filter this and say only, only show things that contain um, project one. And that will only ever show you that. Similarly, you can, um, again, switch your views, switch the um, filters here as well. You could also change this up instead of viewing this by progress, you could view this by, um, let's see, group by status, group by person, group by tags. Um, I haven't assigned any tags yet, so that's not super relevant. So status probably makes the most sense at the moment. So again, you can go through and add whatever properties are going to make the most sense for you. To me, this helps really refine and store that task information really quickly and easily. So um, feel free to make it as short or as long as you'd like. Um, to me, it doesn't it doesn't really bother me that my tasks have a ton of information here. Um, most of the time the task just contains the title here and I don't have a ton of extra information, um, but really the sky is the limit. It's totally up to you how you wanna do that, but that is how you can start creating your master task database and then um, quickly and easily pull it into other pages. And so just a reminder there, hit the slash button, start typing create linked database, type it in, search for your database and you are good to go. Tasks. So you'll notice here too, you can actually embed infinite numbers of the same database on a page. So I will often say, um, uh, you know, like things that are due this week could be done here and then maybe outstanding tasks. Um, 
outstanding or even like a someday category, something like that might be useful. And um, again, that can also be refined by, um, and I'm just going to open this up and you can drag this stuff as well um, in terms of ordering it. But yeah, I tend to um, put the done column on the left. I've got the name, the date, and then everything else is kind of up to you in terms of what's helpful uh, for you to see. That is how you make a master task database.